Hi guys! So you might know me as Med Love Maven. My name is Krista and I run the blog MedLoveMaven.com. Today I just wanted to go over some of the common questions that I've been receiving through email, through tweets, and through comments left on my blog to hopefully answer some of the most common questions about the Medical Laboratory Science Program and if it's the right program for you. There's a lot of videos out, maybe not a lot, <laughs> there are some videos out um, about the CLS program in the US or MLS program in the US, but I haven't seen anything about becoming an MLT in Canada. So hopefully this will help you if you are considering it as a future career. Um, a little bit about myself is that um, for me the MLT program I did after I went to university. I graduated in 2011 from the University of Manitoba with a Bachelor of Science in Microbiology and a minor in Chemistry. So for me Coming to college, I mean, it wasn't the next logical step, according to the world, of how how to kind of go about getting my career, but I always wanted to work in a hospital lab. So for me, it was the next logical step. Um, kind of the thing they don't tell you in university is that it's you can't work in a hospital lab without becoming an MLT. It's a certified profession. You need to take the certification exam through the CSMLS, and you need to pass to call yourself an MLT, and you need to be registered in your province. So if you've been considering working in a hospital lab, I mean, if you want to, you can work as an assistant, but actually authorizing patient results, um, you know, sending out information to doctors that would be help extremely helpful in diagnoses and often are what leads to diagnoses, becoming an MLT is the next correct step. Um, so one of the questions I got was, how do you know if the MLT program is right for you? So it's a tough question and obviously it depends on the person. For me, I always knew, again, this was the program for me, as cheesy as that sounds. Um, being in science and kind of working in a healthcare setting in a lab was always something I saw myself doing. I'm not, I, I can touch everything if it comes off of a patient, but I don't want to see it actually coming out of the patient. Um, so for me, like I'm not bothered by blood, sputum, stool, like I see it all, um, organs, it's fine. I don't have a problem with that. I just, for me, becoming like a doctor was not in the cards for me. Um, I much prefer working on the more technical side of it. Becoming an MLT is very technical. You have to know a lot of background, um, you know, like know a lot about different types of bacteria, know about chemical reactions. There is a lot of science to it. Um, so I really enjoyed that portion and that was always really you know, a highlight for me in class. So I knew that becoming an MLT would be kind of the right career path for me. Now, if you're someone who's considering it, what I would highly, highly recommend would be getting into contact with a local lab in your area. So a lot of hospitals would be more than willing to give you a tour of their lab just so that you can get a sense of what MLTs really do. Because a lot of people don't know. I didn't know about the MLT program or what an MLT even did at all until like my third year of university, which absolutely blows my mind. MLTs are the fourth largest healthcare profession behind doctors, nurses, and pharmacists. So to me, like there should be more awareness about what MLTs do and how important we are to the healthcare system. But that's a whole other rant, which I'm sure you guys have seen on my blog. But um, hospitals are more, usually more than willing to help out prospective students. So for me, I contacted one of the hospitals in Winnipeg and I did a short half day tour of their lab. Um, for me, I was deciding between going into the med lab program or actually going into cytology because I've been accepted to both. Um, and for me, once I saw med lab, just having the flexibility of being trained in five different disciplines, six if you count phlebotomy, um, compared to cytology, which was a lot more limited, and you're doing a lot of microscopy, which I don't mind doing, but I like the variety of being an MLT. So I knew that was for me. I knew that having the option of being able to go in and out of these five disciplines, and as well, there are sub-disciplines in all of those, was really, really attractive to me as a future career. Um, for me, like I've always had a passion in microbiology, which is obvious from my um, Bachelor of Science, but... I, you know, I love hematology. I love transfusion. I really enjoyed all of the other disciplines that there are. So if for some reason I get bored of microbiology or decide that hematology is right for me down the line, I can fully move over. I'm trained in it. 
Um, so having, again, having that flexibility is really a plus and it gives you a lot of abilities to work within different environments. You can work at the federal government in microbiology um, with Public Health Agency of Canada. You can work at a provincial level at reference laboratories. Um, you can work at a hospital level in, you know, flow cytometry. You can work as a pathologist assistant. There are tons of options out there for you, um, especially in Canada. Working as an MLT, you have a lot more options than you do in the U.S. Um, you can go working as a pathologist assistant. You don't need special training besides on-the-job training. Um, there was a, a girl that actually attended Michener who started working as a pathologist assistant right out of school. Her situation is fairly unique. Usually that doesn't happen, but you know, if you show a passion and you meet the right people and you can get some mentors, it, it's always a possibility. So there are many options out there for you. Um, so in terms of other questions, I, I also get like what my experience like was in the, in the program. So my program at Michener was two and a half years. I did two years of theory. Um, then I did a small like two and a half month semester simulation clinical in the summer. And then I had five months of clinical fall till February when then I wrote the CSMLS exam in February. Um, my time spent at Michener was great. Like I... Everyone know, that knows me knows that I really, really love Michener. Maybe it was because it's just so different from university, but I really enjoyed my time there. The difference between university and college like is night and day. University, when you study, you go to class, like no one really knows who you are. You might study the material, you might cram it like three nights before your midterm, forget it, and then cram again for your final. In college, and especially in the med lab program, you constantly have to be on top of what you're learning. You constantly have to be reviewing it because that information is going to be used in your hours of labs every week. You're going to have assignments. You're going to have quizzes. You're going to have exams. It's You can't slack off. And especially with the amount of information you're learning, quite often you're having five, five classes for the five disciplines every semester. So you can't just decide, eh, like, I'm, I'm not really going to study hematology this semester. I'll just cram it at the end. It's not possible. You're going to be having assignments every week. So in terms of difficulty of the program, I found it wasn't difficult in terms of difficulty of content. It was just more time management and the sheer volume of information that you're learning. Um, it's a lot of memorization and a lot of trying to actually understand how things work. So you do have to manage your time wisely and make sure that you are staying on top of stuff because as soon as you slip behind, like, it builds up quickly. Um, another question I get asked a lot is how my clinical experience was. So for me, I really loved clinical. It really gave me an opportunity to work as an MLT, um, not actually obviously as an MLT because I wasn't certified, but I really got to experience what it was like to be an MLT. Um, I, it, it sounds silly, but there's just such a difference between looking at, you know, patient slides where, you know, you can like go up to the front and look at the binder and see if you're right compared to, you know, you and your, um, clinical instructor looking at a slide for the first time together and you both have no idea what's on it. You really can learn real time and, you know, make real time decisions and see how MLTs actually operate in the workplace. And if your decision making would be in line with what they would think, it's, it's really interesting and it makes you feel like, you know, you're, you're taking the steps to become a working MLT. Um, it was a little stressful just because you did have to study and, you know, you didn't want to show up to clinical not having any idea what you're doing. It's, you know, it, it's a five month long, long job interview. And at the end of the day, you're hoping a lot of the time that you can get a job from it. Or if not, you at least can get good references if it wasn't in a location that you wanted to be in. So you want to go in prepared. You don't want to walk into microbiology and say, like, I haven't cracked my notes in four months. I have no idea anything about strep anymore. I mean, they're not expecting you to know all the little tiny details because a lot of the time they don't either. But you should know, you know, you should have reviewed your charts, reviewed your flow, like flow chart notes, reviewed, maybe have quick review notes for yourself just so that you go in a little prepared. Um... So on top of that, I was also studying for the CSMLS at the same t CSMLS exam at the same time, um, just because I wrote immediately after I finished clinical. So during clinical, I did not have a, a second job at all. I just went to clinical and I came home and studied. 
So if you, I know other people were able to work a bit, which is fine. Just for me, I knew that I wanted to focus on clinical, especially with you, where I was at, you worked some crazy shifts. Like I was working 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. I did some 2 to 10s. I did some 1 to 9s. I did some 8 to 4s. So it would have been really difficult for me to plan a, a job around that. Um, and I really, you know, wanted to make the clinical experience the focus for me. So I, I, again, didn't work. And in the end, I think it really worked out for me. I really enjoyed it. And I was able to get a feel for each of the departments and find out if, you know, you're also can see if it, the department's right fit for you. For you, you might love it in school. You might love chemistry. But then once you get out into clinical and you find out that, you know, six hours of your ship, shift is doing calibration, QC, and just getting the modular analyzers up, it might not be for you, but for other people that might be great. They might love that work. Um, so, you know, take the time to experience everything and really think about where you see yourself as, as a technologist once you're done. Um, and just overall, you know, you have to enjoy it too. Um, another question I'll end on for this one is, how did I find the transition from school to my job? So the transition was easy for me. I was offered a job at my clinical site um, before I left. So that was great. Um, you know, I didn't have to go and look for a job. Having a job offer there for me was amazing. I, you know, was one of the, I think I was one of the first people to have a, have a job in my class. Um, but, you know, I, as far as I know, everyone from my class has a job now, which is great. I mean, the demand's there and there are opportunities. Um, in terms of the transition going from student to MLT, it was a little strange at first, just trying to get it in your mind that like, okay, yeah, I actually got to make these decisions now. Everything you've trained for, like you're making the phone calls, you're telling physicians what's going on because they'll be calling you asking questions. Um, that was a little strange at first, but I think after two months, I kind of, you know, you get your confidence up and you feel like you can actually work as a technologist. Um, in terms of like work style, nothing really changed besides me having a photo ID and getting paid money every two weeks. Um, but the actual like working as an MLT, it really was not at all different from my clinical experience. I think, again, it depends really on your clinical site, but my site really showed me what I would be doing if I was working there as an MLT. So the transition was very, very simple for me. So I think that's all the questions I'm going to answer in this video. Um, I'm thinking about possibly doing another video more about how I'm working as an MLT now. If you do have any other questions, please feel free to tweet me at MedLabMaven. You can email me, Krista, at MedLabMaven.com. Um, but hopefully this helps you decide if, you know, med becoming an MLT is for you. If you, again, are considering it, I highly recommend getting a, a tour of a local lab if you're unsure um, or if you have any other questions or know someone who is an MLT who might be able to help you out, reach out to them. We need more people to be interested in the MLT program and I'm more than willing to help you guys out with that. Thank you.